post-World War II Germany was divided into four occupied zones. The Western Allied Zones joined to establish the Federal Republic of Germany in 1949, and the Democratic Republic of Germany, the GDR, was proclaimed within the East Soviet Zone shortly thereafter. The former German capital of Berlin lay totally within the GDR, but also was divided into East and West Zones. While East Germans were forbidden from leaving the GDR, they merely had to travel from East into West Berlin to gain access to West Germany. Three and a half million people, or 20% of the population, had left the GDR for West Germany by 1961. The Berlin Wall was erected by the GDR to prevent this exodus. While this physical wall was dismantled in 1989, the divide between the East and the West still exists. East and West Germany after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the inner wall that remains. German reunification occurring on October 3, 1990, effectively was a takeover of the East by the West. Very quickly, um, reunification came and they were, they were pretty much um, usurped, I guess you could say, by Western Germany. Prior to reunification, East Germans lived in an overtly oppressive political system. In the GDR, we were actually cut off from the whole world, from world politics and world happenings. They were under constant surveillance by the secret police force, the Stasi. This changed post-reunification. And then it hit me. Now, the whole world stands before you. A gate has just opened itself. You are a free human. Reunification, paid for by the West, cost upwards of 2 trillion euros, spent mostly on infrastructure and social support systems. West Germans have grumbled a little bit because for a long time they've been paying in order to rebuild East Germany you know, from ground up. Many East Germans opposed the idea of a capitalist society because of the economic pressures and divides it creates among its citizens. Capitalism is a very individualistic system where you, you really have to kind of fend for yourself. Um, they talk about the Elbogen Gesellschaft, where you really have to use your elbows. The way the reunification was executed did nothing to dispel this concern. Prior to reunification, every East German citizen had a job and a reliable income. Reunification crippled the stable Eastern economy on many levels. At the professional level, reunification did not serve the East well either. Eastern professionals across all walks of life were replaced by their West German counterparts. Law schools, courts, universities, hospitals, and medical schools were closed to control costs, losing out to gleaming buildings in the West. And, um, there were many West Germans who came to East Germany to fill high-level administrative government positions or business executive positions. Everywhere, the most instrumental positions in East Germany were taken mostly by West Germans, which was difficult for East Germans to deal with. Freedoms gained by the East often had negative consequences. A great benefit of reunification was open access to travel and study. We drove into West Germany, and at the time I had the feeling that the fields are greener. Everything is cleaner. It's just nicer. However, this facilitated millions of young East Germans leaving for the West, leading to economic decimation in an aging, unemployed population. The shift from socialism to capitalism was facilitated by the Treuhandanstalt. This, this organization called the Treuhandanstalt came over and began buying up what would have been state-run businesses and winding them down, and they would have been sold, and they would have become, you know, privatized industry at that point. A lack of private capital in the East resulted in 80% of East German commercial property ending up in the hands of the West. Many enterprises were then shut down. Two years after German reunification, 13,000 companies had been sold, industrial production in the East had plummeted by 73%, and unemployment was rampant. Within days, the former GDR went from an unemployment rate of 0% to an unemployment rate of 15%. Westerners took not only East German jobs, but their homes as well. To make amends for properties nationalized by East Germany after World War II, Germany implemented restitution before compensation, allowing individuals with valid claims to East German property to regain ownership of the properties. Four million of the 17 million East Germans were displaced by this policy, and a third of the country's land changed hands. Prior to reunification, East Germans had a strong social support system. You know, the government provided everything. There was almost no unemployment. 
Um, everybody, in one way or another, was guaranteed a job. Uh, things were very inexpensive. They had incredible social benefits that we could only dream about. With reunification, an influx of a Western workforce, replacement of East German professionals by Westerners, and transfer of ownership to the West led East Germans to become second-class citizens in their own country. And, uh, and the difference in income ranging from very little to very sizable just became very evident to everyone, and therefore feelings of jealousy and unhappiness arose. Right. Peter Schneider in Der Mauerspringer, about a man who constantly jumps back and forth over the Berlin Wall, coined the term inner wall to describe the persistent divide plaguing the German populace. The last mayor of East Berlin, Thomas Krüger, felt reunification was a cultural colonialism of the East by West. West Germans came to the East who would not have had opportunities in the West, yet they saw opportunities in East Germany. So, not only the most capable West Germans came to East Germany, and there were, of course, very intelligent people in East Germany, because one must say that the educational system in East Germany was very good. And of course, when someone less capable came over and thought they could do things better, that was very hard for the people to deal with. In 1991, Germany imposed a 5.5% tax on income, the Solidaritätszuschlag, to pump money and resources into the East. To address widespread unemployment, Frührentung, or early retirement, was implemented for older out-of-work individuals. Funding agencies were tasked with retraining workers for needed careers. The fruit of these efforts has been impressive by many measures. They had to be brought up to a, a standard which, which West Germany had before. As a result of this West German infusion of capital, the unemployment gap between East Germany and West Germany post reunification has narrowed dramatically. Furthermore, the East German GDP has grown faster than in West Germany thereby lowering the GDP gap between East and West. Nevertheless, East Germany still lags behind the West. For example, we, we have 500 generals in the German military, and not one of them is East German. You know, we have 153 um, ambassadors, you know, not one comes originally from East Germany. We have, uh, still nowadays, 80% of the judges judging over East German people are coming from the West. Schneider's inner wall manifests itself in unexpected ways. Some former East Germans see the current immigration crisis as a reenactment of what they consider the invasion perpetrated on them by West Germany 30 years earlier. This sentiment has fueled the growth of the far right leaning radically xenophobic party Alternative for Germany, or AFD. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, interviewed by Spiegel Online in 2019, stated. I know that for East Germans of a certain generation, the peaceful revolution did bring freedom, but did not necessarily make life easier. For many, this trade-off was worth it. For others, freedom came at a very heavy cost, the loss of East German identity. The hardest part was to realize that everything they knew was all of a sudden gone and taken away in their perspective. They feel that they were deprived of their identity and of their past. That creates a lot of resentment and that wall in their heads. This inner wall divides Germany into two nominally equal but demonstrably different regions. The young who gained the freedom to reach outside the borders of the former East have realized untold opportunities. I, as a mom, am very proud that my daughter was able to seize and maximally use this opportunity by going her way in her professional career in ways that she otherwise would not have been able to. For the older and those who have stayed behind, the benefits are fewer and farther between. Resentments and disappointments stemming from this inner wall often as strong as those generated by the solid one. Most Germans, East and West, agree reunification was necessary, changed their lives for the better, and rate life satisfaction highly. Yet 62% believe reunification was carried out poorly, and the vast majority still see differences in the standards of living in the two Germanys. There's no such thing as the Germans. There are East Germans and West Germans. A barrier an inner wall still divides. It is less visible, less well known, and less understood than the physical one no longer standing. But jumping back and forth over this one is much harder. I think the wall in our heads will be much harder to tear down than the wall that is actually there. This wall has cultural, psychological, and hidden components that may take generations to tear down completely.